Hey fanboys and girls, it's McGann the Fangirl, and today we're going to talk about Looney Tunes DC character crossover comics. And yes, you will notice throughout Booktubeathon, I'm going to talk a lot about comics and graphic novels, and that's because I have dyslexia, so it's really hard for me to read long books. I did the Harry Potter theory and people were like, oh my god, you have to read the books. And I'm like, oh my god, you don't know how many years that would take me to get through. But I swear to you that these comics exist and I got four out of, I think there were six of them. They sold out of Tasmanian Devil versus Wonder Woman and Marvin the Martian versus Martian Manhunter. So I was out of luck there, but I did get some really cool ones. First up, Legion of Superheroes Bugs Bunny pairing. Is that showing up? Okay, this was really bizarre. This one kind of reminded me of uh, when Uncle Grandpa went on to Steven Universe and the Crystal Gems were like, oh, what's happening? It's basically Bugs Bunny ends up in the 31st century and he can do all his weird, wacky, kind of changey, developy thingies. <laughs> that made a lot of sense. You know, how he can pull stuff out of thin air or change his costume with just kind of thinking about changing what he is wearing. So the Legion of Superheroes thinks that he's a superhero and ultimately he comes through and saves the day. And what I think are really cool about these comics is it starts off with like, they, they do one in sort of the DC style of where it looks very much like a regular DC comic. And then the last few bits at the end, in this one in particular, they tried to make it look like the old Legion of Doom comics. But it was quirky, it was fun, I don't really love either franchise individually, but together it was, it was really kind of Looney Tunes humor in DC Comics, and that's, you know, who doesn't love that? Next up, Jonah Hex and Yosemite Sam crossover. Now in this one, Yosemite Sam is some kind of prospector in the old Wild Wild West days, and he ends up hiring Jonah Hex to come help him guard his uh, valuables, as it were. He strikes gold and he needs somebody to offer up protection for him. And what was really strange about this one is that Yosemite Sam is a guy and he's like really kind of made out to look like a DC version of Yosemite Sam where he's short but he looks the same, talks the same as the Looney Tunes character. But Foghorn Leghorn is also a character in this, and he's some freak show chicken man. Like, he really still looks like Foghorn Leghorn. Yes, he's a freak show wrestler. They offer like a hundred bucks if he, if anybody can beat him in the ring. And so at the end, Jonah Hex takes off with his satchel full of gold, and Yosemite Sam and Foghorn Leghorn stick together as business partners. And then there's this really cutesy, it almost looks like they disney Jonah Hex. And they made it to where he is looking for a bounty for a bear. And <laughs> it's a really weird story, but it's kind of a cutesy Looney Tunes story. And I'm kind of obsessed with what Jonah Hex looks like as, as this cleaned up Warner Brothers uh, Looney Tunes character. All right, next on the docket, Lobo and the Roadrunner. Which, <laughs> this, this one probably had the neatest story of the four that I got a hold of because it explains why all the Looney Tune characters are so anthropomorphic. anthropomorphic. And that's because over in Area 52, they got some alien serum DNA thing and they mixed it with desert animals and that mutated them into the Looney Tunes. So you end up having the super smart Wile E. Coyote that has tried to kill the Roadrunner for 70 years and has been unsuccessful, so he goes to Lobo to put a bounty out on the Roadrunner. And Lobo is kind of a forgotten character a lot of days now. I don't think a lot of younger people really know him as well as we used to back in the 90s. But he's an interesting guy. And of course, much like Wile E. Coyote, he could not defeat that Roadrunner. And his little short Looney Tunes-esque side of the story was kind of interesting because it was all about contractual obligations and having to try and catch the Roadrunner without killing him because he's now a PG character for this comic short. And then, not the best story, but my favorite titled pair up here, Batman and Elmer Fudd. Yes, this is real. I did not make this. Batman and Elmer Fudd. And what's particularly interesting about this one is that all of the Looney Tunes characters are now human. That's Porky here at the bottom. That's Bugs is kind of the skinny black haired guy that's kind of Weasley looking. It's really kind of interesting how they did it. They made it like a little detective comic like Batman would be. And then Batman and Elmer Fudd get into this scuffle and it's all over this girl that got killed, Silver St. Cloud, that Elmer Fudd loved and Batman used to love. 
And I thought, you know, it's not really Looney Tunes, but it's kind of cool how they morph that into working with Batman and it was more serious and Elmer Fudd was this police detective kind of guy or maybe he was a bounty hunter. I don't think I was 100% clear on that part, but it was really different and interesting and I, I liked how they put it together. And then of course, when they change it up at the end and make it Looney Tunes with Batman visiting, it is rabbit season and <laughs> Bugs Bunny is playing the little game of no, it's bat season. And even though I miss getting copies of them, I can only dream how good Wonder Woman, Tasmanian Devil, and Marvin Martian, Martian Manhunter would have been. But I believe all of these comics came out in June. They're all listed as number ones. I don't know if they're going to continue to serialize this comic. Maybe it's just going to be dependent on the feedback and the sales. Uh, I don't really see how the Jonah Hex one could continue because that story wrapped up pretty well and the same thing with the uh, Lobo and Bugs Bunny, but I could definitely see Elmer Fudd and Batman solving more crimes together. Uh, it's pretty cool. I was kind of really happy with this. I've been out of comics for a little bit and yeah, I mean, it's if you see them, they're worth picking up and they're worth reading for yourself, definitely. So go have fun with it. Go get into comics. Well, that's all I have for now, but this video's not quite over yet. We're expanding, so I have to plug our other channels. Total, we have The Fangirl, dealing primarily with movies and shows, Say Halo Goodbye Gaming, and The Family Family Vlogs. Links are in the description, and we would love to see you at all three channels. Okay, I think that's it. So thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed enough to like, subscribe, and share this video. We have tons of material across our various channels that you are fully encouraged to go check out. And if somehow you can't get enough of me, please connect with me on Instagram at Say Halo Goodbye or Twitter at the underscore family.